Here's how to connect two uh, game controllers to your actual robot uh, through the driver station app. So make sure to have the app open and uh, have your splitter. This is going to plug directly into your USB adapter to the phone. And in the splitter you can actually plug in these, but we'll do that in a second. On the app, we're going to go to this top corner settings and you got these options you want to scroll to game pads and advanced gamepad features hang on there for just a second over here we can plug in these um, it actually doesn't matter the configuration of these you can plug it into any of the four uh, but it doesn't make sense to add any more than four obviously that just closed so we can run back to settings advanced game features okay so you have none no users right here I'll press User 1, and it asks for any key on the gamepad. So right here, press A. And right there, it added the user in. Do that again for user 2. And there it is. So those are uh, specific addresses for these two gamepads. Um, but it, again, you can just see that the gamepads work if you go back and right up there. Okay, so you actually have to restart the app to see them work. Close the app, swipe out, open it, and now you see it there at the top, such that when you press one, it actually glows up there, press the other, it glows. Alright, so that's how you connect game pads, easy. In this video we're going to go over some tips and tricks on how to drive the actual 2022-2023 uh, Bishop Moore robot we built. It has a two-stage lift system here, uh, such that using these two motors, one on this side and one on that side. Oh, there we are. Right there. They'll lift this gradle up and uh, then there's a singular servo here which rotates these wheels um, which will snatch a cup. I'm not going to demonstrate the cup snatching here because I don't actually have the cups in my room, but we'll demonstrate some driving in this and just uh, some tips and tricks that I've found myself uh, especially the ones that I programmed in. So, first step is to, on the app, you gotta select your teleop mode. So, uh, this one right now is controller test, but on the actual day of, you're gonna use full setup. Initialize, and start. So you'll see, uh, this is controller one, so that's the driver. Yep, okay. So, uh, first thing to keep in mind when you're driving is down is forward, up is backwards up, down. Uh, you can do a lot of pretty interesting turns when you do stuff like this. Yeah, let me turn on the brightness. Do stuff like that. If you do one up, one down, and start doing turns like that. And a lot of this stuff is pretty intuitive. You'll figure it out as you start driving quite a bit. But it's pretty easy. You can do one wheel or one side. Yeah, nicely done. Um, or you can do both wheels, obviously, for a full, full wheel drive. Pretty easy to drive. Uh, now this is the interesting stuff when it comes to driving. These back bumpers, so you got your bumpers are these ones, and you got your triggers are these. The triggers can be held down at any different distance. The bumpers can only be pressed. Uh, this is important because the triggers I mapped to slow down your speed. So if I can put my phone down in just a second, I feel like that, you'll be able to see the speed um, of the actual bot slowing down and not maintaining consistency because I'm actually changing it when I press the bumpers. So this is the fast speed, right? And it's pretty fast, but it's also pretty hard to control sometimes. And uh, you'll notice there's some dangerous pitch of the actual lift system, especially when it's fully extended, just because of all that torque. So, we can actually hold these back triggers. If you hold one back trigger, it'll go this speed, which is a pretty good speed. If you hold both back triggers, you have this speed. If you hold partially one back trigger, so I'm gonna go from Full, full slowest speed 
and slowly start moving. So right there, I didn't move and my hands on the actual joysticks at all. I moved my index finger off the back trigger slightly. This is important because you can actually make a variable speed uh, for perfect micro adjustments based on how heavily you press down the actual trigger. Now if you don't need that much precision, which you might not, you can also just press either of the bumpers and that'll give you half speed. Remember full speed. And here's half speed. Full, half. Just if you need a little bit less precision. Um, and then the final thing, if you need super slow, especially when you're doing micro uh, precision, you can hold the bumpers and hold both triggers, which gives you this speed. In fact, it's not even moving on my carpet because my carpet isn't the right material. Um, but it would move on the floor. So just, you could do bumpers and then one trigger and then part of the other trigger. Which gives you this speed. Yeah, you see it's really slow. Uh, but sometimes you need that precision. So there you go. That's uh, movement. And then let's talk about the actual lift system. So, bring it back. This is using your second control. You have two drivers. You have two human operators during the uh, the teleop period. So for this, you got uh, you got your lift system, and this is you only use your joysticks and the D-pad. The D-pad activates the servo, so you can go up or down. See it move, and you'll use that to actually tighten onto the cup once it's in this position. And then you'll use your joysticks to move your gradle up. Just like that. And I told you it's two stage, so you can do something like this. Yeah, that second motor sounds really bad because it's not tightened. Don't worry, day of, it, sh it should be pretty tightened uh, if all goes well. Let's push this down. There we are. Uh, it's pretty easy to control, so just make sure you get uh, a pretty good driver. Anyway, that's, that's all I gotta say about driving this thing. I'm gonna do more some, some more videos on uh, programming and troubleshooting. All right, we're gonna run through all the code real quick. It's only uh, about 100 lines, so it's not that bad. So, uh, you got your package up here. You gotta have this, and you gotta have all your imports that actually can ref be referenced by the code later on, like you see DC motor right here, DC motor right here. You gotta have this class name, that's where it's coming from, it's coming from the import, easy. They'll mostly automatically import for you when you type them on the actual on bot Java, fine. Uh, private, you're just declaring instance variables. Right front motor, R stands for right, and front motor, so left front motor, right back motor, left back motor, easy. Um, they're considered from here, this is your left front, so this is the front of the vehicle. Uh, left front, right front, back, left, right back. Easy. Moving on. Here, just declaring more instance variables, the servo motor, more DC motors, which are actually the hex motors. So you see you can declare the hex motors as the same as the planetary gearboxes. They're all considered DC motors. They all operate the same way, and they all use a DC motor class. Fine. Here are some instance variables we use throughout the rest of the code, and I'll uh, explain to them as they show up. Uh, initialize, initialize function. This function is called uh, at, the beginning of the, at the beginning of the actual runtime, uh, which we'll take a look at at the very end, because it needs to initialize all your instance variables to actual hardware on the robot, which is what this hardware map.get does, and then it gets your DC motor class again, you have to call the right class, and then you have to call the right name of the class. Now, what is our front motor referring to? Yes, it's the same name as right up here, but it's in a string, so that's interesting. So you actually have to go over to your controller app, 
your driver station right here and you'll find these same names if you press the settings and adjust your brightness configure robot you're gonna find all these names so right now it's in we're in the tw testing 23 2023 configuration you press edit you uh, open up your control hub and control hub in this case and if you go to motors you'll see right right front motor same thing 20 to 1 HD X Interplanetary gearbox that's the same thing so right front motor right front motor each of these motors have to be assigned to the right name these have to match these have to match the string right there uh, otherwise you're gonna have the wrong associated things or the code will crash upon runtime uh, which you'll be able to find out pretty quickly All right, front motor set direction, DC motor dot direction dot reverse is, uh, and the same for the back motor, is setting the right motors to move in the same direction as the left motors do. This way we can use the four wheel drive much more efficiently. Don't have to use separate joysticks for every single wheel. You can use two joysticks instead of four. It makes a lot more sense. Telemetry dot add data is basically the system uh, print in Java. So you're gonna be able to send whatever you want to the console on the actual driver station app. So you can use this to uh, keep yourself updated on important information as you're actually operating the robot. Um, Telemetry.update will delete the previous data from the console, or it'll clear the data, and then you can uh, it'll post the most recent data added. So in this case, it's going to initialize the robot at the end of the initialization method. The operate driver method is all about uh, controlling the actual driving functions. There's a few more sub methods in this one, which we'll get into, but the driver one is for driving the robot as opposed to driving the lift. So the original code was a lot messier than this and had a lot more lines. I was able to simplify it uh, and I use this power divisor to give the, the driver a lot more control as to the precision of um, micro precision and movement. So left power, right power, this is important. This is getting the game stick to joystick only on the Y axis. Uh, and that's your power of your left wheels and the right power corresponds to the power of your right wheels. It gets your right and left game stick, uh, gamepad joysticks, uh, which, is, which is exactly what you think it would do. When you push up, it goes, actually when you push up, it goes backwards. When you push down, it goes forwards. Um, and it negates left power because again, uh, otherwise it'd be opposite so that works out just fine now bumpers uh, if you if you have either of the bumpers held down uh, it will in fact set the power divisor by two uh, and later you'll see down here when it's actually setting the power of the motors it divides by the power divisor this is important because up here if you divide the power by two you're basically splitting the speed of the robot in half so ultimately what this accomplishes by changing the power divisor is it'll change, it'll slow down your robot however much you want. So the next line, um, power divisor times one plus the right trigger. The right trigger is the actual back buttons, not the bumpers of the remotes. So when you hold them down, they have values between zero and one. When they're all the way held down, they're at one and when they're not all the way down, or, or, or and when they're uh, not held down all, they're at zero. So at a minimum, the power divisor is going to be multiplied by one, uh, which is fine, but at a maximum, it's going to be one plus one. So the power divisor, in fact, uh, multiplies by two. So this is a pretty, these two can very powerfully influence your driving. Um, whereas when they're not held down, they won't do anything, but what you can variably change the speed of your driving you can slow it down to as much precision as you need because you can actually hold down the triggers as much as you want to so it's, it's a very precise and, and also one trigger will slow it and then both triggers will slow it even more so you can do one you can do both or you can do none it's it's great and then you can actually it's added if you can put the bumper down you can put both triggers down you'll have a very 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 slow thing and you get the power drive uh, a call to the power drive method that's right here. This is the simplification I was talking about. Uh, it's it's just, it's very simple. 
because it's, it's basically the repeated code, or it was repeated code, so I just put it all into one method. So it takes all the motors, it sets their powers, um, it might reverse the power if it has to, but it, it's pretty straightforward. And then it divides it by, hard, by the power divisor, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, then you also have these strafe commands, uh, which is just maps to the D-pad left and right. Strafing is um, moving left and right without moving forward or backwards, for the most part. And it's very similar to what we saw before. It just uses uh, one in, these, in, this, in this specific pattern, where the left back and the right front are negative, and the left front and the right back are positive, such that it actually makes it strafe. Uh, strafe. So it actually works very well. That's for strafing left, and you also have strafe right down here. This method is a small method for operating the lift because the lift is a fairly simple compared to the actual driving methods. Uh, like we saw before, you have lower lift power and upper lift power, uh, which is mapped to the, the second gamepad actually, the gamepad two. And again, right stick, left stick uh, on the Y axis. Also, if the D-pad is uh, pressed up, then you will set the servo to its max position if it's set to the if it's pressed down, you'll set the servo to its minimum position, and you'll actually use this to grip the cup when it's placed over it. So that, that's very easy to work with. Um, and then all it does here is it actually gets the power from your gamepads, the, the position from your gamepad joystick, and it sets the actual motor. So very simple. Final couple lines are, uh, is it actually makes it go. These are required, you have to override these to make a proper java file for these robots so call at override and then public void runoff mode is what it needs to be called you have to uh the initialize function is what we saw earlier then you have to call wait for start or else your code will not run uh then typically what most people what most programmers do is they're just going to call uh while op mode is active and then they'll put their functions inside of that so we have operate driver and operate lift, which is what you saw earlier, and then telemetry update in case you ever have any telemetry changes. And yeah, that's the entire code for um, full setup to be used during competitions. Uh, Sunny is our autonomous file. There's really nothing in there right now. Um, and these are your test files to work with whenever you want to change stuff. So preferably don't change full setup, keep it, keep it working. And don't change Sunny, keep it working. And uh, well, I accidentally just closed it. But that'll show up in a second again. There we go. Um, yeah. So don't change these two. Change these two when you want when you want to update stuff. Yeah. That's that's all for the uh, drive class. The full setup uh, explanation. Let's change the name to full setup. I'm not controller test. So that's the code as to how you actually get to these pages to work with the code. That's very important, you're gonna to need to know this. Um, there's two ways. The first way is to actually physically wire with a USB-A to USB-C connection um, straight into the control hub. Now I actually wouldn't recommend doing this because you can't really test the robot when it's wired into your computer. And um, if you jiggle the wire just a little bit, it kind of crashes really easily. Um, it'll reconnect, but that's not good. What you really want to do is what we do on the laptop at school. Um, we go to, we connect the, it's all explained right here. Uh, you go to your Wi-Fi and then you click on the actual Wi-Fi of the robot. Um, boom, boom, boom. You go to this specific IP address and you can access literally the same page as uh, right here. It'll look the exact same. And you can get it on Bot Java, which is what we were looking at before. Great, perfect.